Oh, it's going to come through. Do you know what? I do genuinely love this kind of setup I've got. Wasn't done deliberately. It just seems to work. Uh, there's probably going to be some noise. It is currently 4.30 in the afternoon, which is not the best time to film. But I've got this in my head, so I want to get it out. You're going to hear traffic. You're going to hear family. My voice is a bit weird because I went out on Friday night, which is kind of what this video is about. So I want to explain what a depressive episode to me is. To go back to when my mental health, I first noticed it, was 2004-5. And that's when I really start to notice where I can go back and remember like what would the normal um, how do I say it? the normal signs of depression are. And uh, that's evolved over the years to a point now where I barely even kind of notice it. But when I go back further beyond that, Jesus Christ, that's 20 years ago. 20 years of known mental health issues. But I got coffee. I forgot sugar. <laughs> uh, I look back to like my teens and stuff, and I can see it there. But I want to say, like, for me, then a depressive episode was it was before I was medicated and stuff. I would spend days just on my own, not crying, because there's still the. Um, I don't cry very often. Even when I'm completely in the bottom, I don't cry often. And I think that's to do with the whole manliness thing of not being allowed to cry, you know. Like, even when I'm crying on my own, I feel shame. But that is for another video. There's a lot of videos coming. <laughs> if you want to hear one man complain about his depression, this is the channel. <laughs> so, the reason I'm bringing this now is... I am at the moment depressed, so to speak. But it doesn't affect me in a way that it did, it did 15, 20 years ago. Again, I'd be in bed, I'd ignore everyone, I'd not talk to anyone, I wouldn't eat a lot. Uh, I just didn't have a way of really describing it. It is the traditional, you know, uh, stereotype, all day in bed. Standing in a shower, just staring with the water pouring over you, you know, hating my life. <laughs> that, kind of, that kind of thing. <laughs> like, you know, proper mid 2000s, late 2000s emo music video. You can fit me in there. But now, it, it's different. Like, 10 years ago, when I was more accepting of the mental health, the BBD, when I was more aware of it, uh, I could kind of feel it when it was encroaching on my turf, and um, the, the way that would work was, and now even up to like a year ago, I would kind of feel it when it um, was approaching, because it kind of felt like a bit of a, a tide, a bit of a wave, so, you know. Sometimes I wouldn't notice it. it, you know. Actually, that's a good way to describe depression. It kind of comes in, you know. Sometimes it'd just be, I could use the camera here, you know, slowly as it comes in with the tide. Sometimes, <laughs> you know. And I could feel like I'd start to get emotional, overwhelmed, stressed out a bit easier. And in the job I was in at the time, I could just. I'd recognise it, I'd remove myself from any situation as soon as I could. And it wasn't always straight away, but sometimes it'd be like, you know, for five, ten minutes I would sit down, and I would just sit down, have a coffee, breathe a bit. Like, I despise mindfulness, I really do. And I don't use mindfulness in a way that I was taught to accept it, I just kind of developed a way of going, right, okay, this is what's happening. We need to prepare for it. And it might be a case of if I could stop the tide there, it doesn't go any further. 
and then you know it might push you back a little bit but i was prepared i had you know coffee to perk me up a bit i would be willing to you know a, 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 my favorite meal for dinner a video game see a friend you know just something to kind of distract me from it so the tide would just go and then fuck off <laughs> and then there were times where um it would come in much stronger and there wasn't a lot i could do to stop it but if i realized it in time i could you know it's coming in strong but you know i could negate the damage so instead of it kind of coming in and just oof, moving everything you know it would come in and i had certain things i could do again see a friend something like that you know so it's gone and it's affected me but there's no lasting damage and then and then there's sobriety depression which is new to me <laughs> and because uh, I've been a heavy drinker for about 10 years and th this is new to me uh, when I get depressed I kind of withdraw in I don't really talk to anyone I don't like the first thing to go which is disgusting the first thing to go is my personal care like I mean I don't exercise and stuff anyway but I kind of stop washing I stop showering the, the it's disgusting I'm aware and I could go like a week without showering and it's only when my wife will go ooh you're a bit stinky like well I'll kind of go right yeah because you know you can only cover with deodorant for a certain amount of time and unfortunately uh, over the years the self-help thing is my diet the type 2 diabetes with the um the drinking, for example, but that, but the drinking in many ways was me going, still being affected, but because I could distract myself with the booze, I acknowledged it was there, but it couldn't do too much damage because I was aware it was there and I could do stuff to kind of go around it. And uh, I, this is a bit discombobulated, so, but like, you know, I would, I'd sleep a lot more, I wouldn't see anyone wouldn't do my hobbies, video games, uh, but my lifestyle change, wouldn't do video games, YouTube and stuff like that. Now this YouTube channel actually, since I started this about the same time I stopped drinking, has been an absolute godsend. It's given me that distraction where I felt that, I filmed something, felt better because for me this is my therapy. Um, but over the last... I've removed the drinking, I've removed the Coca-Cola because of the diabetes, and Coca-Cola, I adore Coca-Cola, and for me that was a treat, so I know it sounds weird, but if I had that, and then I had a big old sugary drink, you know, the sugar would kick in, it would help, there's all these little things, and I stopped doing them. And uh, because of the job I've done for the last two years, it's an average of about 60 hours a week, days, nights, 12 hour shifts, trying to catch up with sleep, I haven't really done a lot of my hobbies, since starting this job, I basically stopped YouTube altogether. Uh, I haven't really played many video games. You know, I was a good couple hours a day, you know. But now it's, I'll occasionally get into a game or play a week solid. But then it'll be like three or four weeks where I'll, I'll turn the Xbox on. And then just not choose anything to play. And then sometimes I, but like, you know, but it's like the night shifts. Night shifts at work are very, very quiet in this time. So I bought a Steam Deck to play games. And I don't play it. I spent a lot of time already on YouTube, but, you know, I don't play it. So, a lot of these things um, where the signs of depression are just kind of also a side effect of working so much. So, when this wave has come in, I haven't really noticed it because it's like, I haven't been playing games because I haven't had the time to play or want to play games. Like, I'm always sleeping because I work so many hours. I'm always tired and um, it was only during this um, like uh, this week where um, I've been off that I realized like every time I've had a, I've had it for a birthday is it's my wedding anniversary tomorrow and a few other things and I've gone out for a birthday and then like so I've done really well not drinking after seven weeks and on Friday night <laughs> I went out and on Friday I just didn't want to, I just did not feel alive at all. But 
it was one of the, these events where it's all these old friends getting together who I haven't seen together for a very long time at a reunion of a, not a club night that I used to go to 15, 20 years ago. And it was still the same places there. It was quite funny. And I just wasn't feeling it. I didn't want to be there. I got there at the last minute, kind of thing. And then my, I was like, shit, okay, maybe. Okay, I think I've got a depressive episode coming here. And then my response to that was, I was there. I was at a pub, so I drank. And I drank a lot. <laughs> and uh, I woke up the next morning. And I wasn't particularly hungover because I don't really get them anymore. And I'd spent 60 quid. And I had the guilt of, like, oh, drank you're not meant to be doing that and stuff and I still haven't decided if I'm giving up alcohol together or not but I didn't you know it, it's one of those things that relapses happen there's no point beating myself up about it but then on Sunday I had a family barbecue and I slept all the night before and went to the family barbecue and I'm not I'm not a very social person in certain most circumstances and it was there and then I got home from the barbecue we were only there for four hours got home from the barbecue about five I went to sleep and then I woke up at two o'clock in the morning went back to bed and then I woke up Monday morning at about eleven o'clock so I just slept all the way through and then I stayed up a bit went to bed and it just it exhausted me and then I woke up at six and I played some video games and stuff like that. And then the next day, I had lunch with my mum for her birthday. And uh, I was only with her for an hour and a half. This was yesterday. I got home about four o'clock. I went to bed, straight to sleep. Woke up at one, had some toast. Went back to bed. And then I got up at two o'clock this afternoon. And uh, that's what kind of, what confirmed it for me that my social battery is dead. I'm just sleeping. Like, I've been getting some horrible thoughts. But I've been so used to those for years. It's just a case of, um, I ignore them. <laughs> you know, it's like riding to work on my bike. And they kind of go, no, oh, I don't want to go to work. Oh, look, there's a bus. No, 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 no. That's, that's a little bit too, uh, too drastic, too drastic. Don't think like that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I miss the signs of my normal depressive phases because my life's got to a point where those <laughs> normal, like, recognised signs are just side effects of my current life. Uh, so <laughs> it's like being sober is learning depression all over again. This is like my third cup of coffee today. <laughs> I've only been up three hours. <laughs> so, yeah. But talking about it helps. And I don't talk to a lot of people in my life about my issues because it's like I want people to know that I'm suffering. But I don't want them to know because I can't deal with the um, responses, with the attention it brings on me. So it's like when my wife goes, oh, what's wrong? I just, the only thing she knows goes through my head is, I'm struggling today. I'm not doing very well. Or I'm not good. That's like the three responses she gets from me. And she's learned to not ask. She just goes, okay. She goes, so, and then, you know, she'll do what she can to help. But why well, I don't open up very often. That's one of the weird things about me opening up on here is because it's much, much easier to do it to strangers. Okay, I'm not really sure I explained what a depression episode is to me. <laughs> it's now. What could they call this one? But, um, thanks for watching. Uh, the channel's growing at a really good rate. I'm quite happy. The feedback's been great. And, uh, it's good for the ego. So that helps with the... Uh, before the... <laughs> the I wonder if that's a good way to describe depression as a wave. Hands <laughs> in a coffee cup. <laughs> I'm going to try playing some video games now. <laughs>